What's up, you guys? I am so excited because I am here to announce my new podcast series called Unscrambled Faith. This has been long overdue. This has been an idea that I personally have wanted to do over the last year or two, but I'm so excited. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, no matter how you got here, whether you know me personally, whether you stumbled across this, thank you so much for joining me. I'm just super excited. Um, yeah, and let's get started on this journey. Um, again, it's called Unscrambled Faith, and this is going to be a topic pretty much we're going to talk about every single week. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. So what happens, question to you, is what happens when the void that we have tried to fill, when we have a void in our life that we have tried to fill, when it no longer serves us? what happens, right? I mean, I can't tell you how many times through so many years of trying over and over that I've had a void in my life that I have found multiple things to try to fill it with. So what happens when we have a void that it just continuously feels empty, right? And we keep looking for that one thing and it could be more than one thing to fulfill that void. And if whether that thing brings us excitement, whether we feel fulfilled by it or so we think, right? What is that thing? And why is it, why is it that we have this need to continuously fill it? Why is it that we have this void where we feel empty and I don't know about you, but a lot of times it feels like that there are things that, and I'm just speaking on point my own life, there are things that in my past and, and in my present that I'm constantly filling this void up with that are just not good for me. Whether it's negative thoughts, whether it's food, whether it's <laughs> social media, <laughs> Whether it's talking to people, um, my friends who I am constantly looking for advice and I'm turning to them for guidance and, and I'm not having a clear understanding of why it still feels like it's a void, right? And I feel like that when we give up one thing, a lot of times, especially if you had it, and we usually do have an addictive behavior, we're going to turn into, turn to something else, right? Not just one thing, we're going to turn to something else. So, again, going back to what is that void that's in your life? And the void that we have, what is it that you are turning to to fill it? And more importantly, as we go out to the rest of this month, what is something that you're willing and openly willing to release? I mean, for me... I came to the realization today that I need to release self-doubt. I need to release the fact that there are so many times that I, I know the answer to something and I know what to say or I, I know how I want to feel about something, but I have so much self-doubt within myself that I feel like, and it's not self-doubt that I don't know what I'm talking about because I do know what I'm talking about, but I self-doubt in a way that I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Or I'm afraid of what they're going to say, how they're going to react, right? Or I'm tiptoeing around the truth because I'm scared that they're going to not want to hear. They're going to get offensive, right? They're not going to hear what I want to say. Or how about the fact that I self-doubt in a way of that I'm gifted and I'm, I'm knowledgeable in a certain area that gets me excited and I've learned from and I, I work well in, but where self-doubt comes into play is that I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough as the other person. And maybe I have a little bit more learning to do before I talk to this person about what it is that they're asking of me. But my thing is, is that if, if someone's coming to me, if someone comes directly to me, especially the people who I keep in my close knit circle, if they're coming to me for advice or if they're coming to me and 
and they're looking for guidance or they have questions about something that they know that I've learned from or I've kind of dabbled in, right? Or they've heard through the grapevine that I'm good at. If that person is coming to me, why would I fill myself with self-doubt? Because the way I'm looking at it is that I'm releasing self-doubt and I'm embracing arrogance. Now, hopefully I didn't lose you there. Hopefully I didn't lose you there. Because arrogance, I feel like that there's such a heavy connotation that comes with the term arrogance. So when I say arrogance, what I mean is by leading with arrogance, you're leading with confidence. If you think back on maybe perhaps somebody that you've crossed paths with, or if there's somebody who comes to mind when I say the word arrogance, I feel like that there's a, a, a line where when someone is arrogant it is because they are extremely knowledgeable, comfortable, com not comfortable, they're confident, they're strong, they're bold, they're so self-assured of themselves because they know what they're talking about. They are so self-confident in themselves that without a doubt in their mind, they know immediately what to tell you. I don't know about you, but something I heard the other night, and let me tell you, let me tell you that it hit home for me, and I don't know if I'm ever going to forget it. <laughs> it was that when you have arrogance, arrogance again brings its confidence, right? I would much rather in any state of my life, I would much rather deal and be in the midst of the presence of somebody that is arrogant, because if they're arrogant, it means that they know what they're doing versus if I talk to somebody and they're shaky, they're unsure of themselves, they're self-doubting themselves, I'm not going to trust that person. And especially when it comes to something that I'm wanting to purchase, right? Or I'm wanting to invest in, I need more knowledge about something. If I'm going to go to an individual and they're, they're not showing me arrogance, they're like, mm, wishy-washy. Um, they're, they're not making eye contact with me. They're hesitant or they, let's just say it's even over the phone, right? Or, ooh, through email, <laughs> like some form of communication where it's not in person. To me, like if you're not self-assure yourself, how am I supposed to trust you? How am I supposed to have confidence in you, let alone myself, if you're not coming across to me as being sure of yourself? Like, how am I supposed to until, still trust in somebody if you're not even trusting yourself? You know what I mean? So for me personally, like I said, I am blessing and releasing self-doubt in myself. Self-doubt for sure. And I feel like I want to I want to grow and gain more confidence in the fact that there are things that I, I do know and I have trained myself on and that I am knowledgeable about. And I don't want to downsize myself in a way that I, I make myself smaller or less loud or less known because I don't want to stand out too much. Something that I was talking about with my one of my good friends today was the fact that one of my, my key phrases that I've started recently using a lot is that extra is my love language. Like extra in everything. And we were talking about how extra in how I dress or extra in the things that I purchase or extra in, in the way that I describe something or even in my own small business, I'm extra in the details that I give back to my customer base. I mean, hello, my background, my wall has colorful sprinkles on it. I like being extra and there's nothing wrong with that. But by being extra, I want to stand strong in the fact that I am confident in what I know. I am confident in what I've learned. But in return, because I want to grab hold tightly to that confidence, I want to bring that with me and still carry that with me in a way that I'm no longer going to feel that emptiness with that void. Because, I mean, when I tell y'all that in my past, like, I've always thought that like when I was younger, drugs and alcohol. Let's be real. Let's be transparent. 
right out the gate with this podcast. For a very long time when I was younger, I felt like drugs and alcohol were going to fill that void. Substances, I thought was going to fill that void. And the thing is, is that because I have a very addictive personality, even though I would give up one thing, I was turning to another. So here I was going from substance abuse, and then it would go into binge eating. It would go into eating food, and then from food, it was working out too much. And when I say too much, it was too much, excessively, and obsessing over numbers and tracking. And it was from like one thing to another. And then I was trying to fill that void for so long with relationships, toxic relationships at that. And then it went from that to excessively working. As I got older, it was throwing myself into my work and my job, a full-time job, not my small business job. I was working nine to five corporate type job, throwing myself into that. And, and it just, y'all, it was just bouncing from one thing to another. And it was only temporary. That's the thing. It was only temporary. And what I realize now is that nothing other than my faith, nothing other than the belief that of kindness and positivity and that I'm constantly on a day-to-day -day basis just striving to be a better version of myself. Those are the things that I want to fill my void up with. I, I want to fill my cup up with. I no longer want it to be this empty vessel of a void because the things that I thought in the past were going to bring me fulfillment and and joy and make me feel whole and confident confident those things were only temporary yes some of them did bring me confidence but only temporary like a band-aid and the next day would come and i would have to start all over again and at the end of the day it did leave me feeling empty it let it led me feeling to where i wasn't confident anymore that I wasn't even aware of who I was. My entire identity was stripped away the moment that I decided that I no longer wanted to fill that void up with materialistic things. And that's the thing that I still struggle with to this day, y'all, is that I feel like we're always going to have this void. We're always going to have this teeny bit of emptiness as much as we work at it and work at it and chip away a little bit at a time. I'm always going to have this like little bitty self-doubt, tiny little bit of emptiness inside of me because we're only human, right? But where the decision and the make or break comes for me is, am I going to give in to the things that once I felt like were going to fill that void? Or am I going to lean in more on the harder things, the things that I have to feel? My friend and I were talking recently about when it comes to the things that we have to feel, like, for example, for I was sharing with her over the last two years, it was hurt and it was loneliness. And it was two heavy feelings that I had to actually do. I had to actually go through the motions. I had to feel them. And I told her that it came and went in waves. And the only thing that I really could do, because I didn't understand it, I didn't know where it was coming from, but I knew that if I didn't grab a hold of the bootstraps, if I didn't grab a hold of it as tight as I could, just as much as I was riding out the waves, I couldn't help but feel that the, that the waves in itself would consume me so much that I would just basically be drowning. And I couldn't keep my head above water. But what I chose to do was I chose to write out the last two years of sadness and loneliness. And that showed up and looked different for me in so many different ways. And there were so many moments in my life that I continuously, I lived out my day-to-day -day life. I lived out my, my life by working my job, by showing up for my team, by uh, making memories with my friends, by traveling, but... That doesn't necessarily mean, it doesn't say that I wasn't feeling those things. Now, what I knew is that I couldn't lay around and sell pity because in the past I have struggled with depression. I do struggle with burnout from my ADHD. So with these things in mind, I knew that I had to keep the momentum going. I had to keep moving, even if it was baby steps. And then nowadays it's like taking every breath of every moment of my life 
by the second. Instead of me thinking, oh, what am I doing a year from now? Whoo, let me tell you, I'm like, what am I doing in the next 15 minutes? What am I doing in the next five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes? Because sometimes, sometimes we have moments where it feels like an eternity before I'm going to get there and progress is going to be made. So most of the time I have to scale way back and I have to think on a case by case basis. So for me, again, that's what am I doing in the next five minutes? Because I don't know about you, but to me, time is precious. Time is precious. I would much rather take the time. That's going to be the key word right now. I would rather take the time and enjoy my, myself by being present in the moment rather than focusing on so much ahead of me that then that's where I feel like I get trapped in that emptiness and, and the, going back to the word void where I feel like that because I'm spinning on empty my wheels I'm spinning on my wheels and I'm feeling empty and and I just don't want to do and I'm just trying to reach for so many things that are coming into my grasp to help fill this emptiness to help fill this void that I, I get so frustrated and I get so upset because it's like this never-ending hamster wheel and I just can't get off of it it's like a roller coaster that I just can't get off and so I was talking to my friend about today is that you know, when it comes to trying to fill that void, her and I agree that it's better for us to face these things head on and for us to reflect on what is it that we're going to release? So my question to you this week is what is it, what is that one thing that you're going to release? What is that one thing? Isn't, I mean, if it's more than one thing, fine. <laughs> but what is that one thing that you're going to release? But, oh, y'all, I'm so excited, um, again, that y'all are joining me on this journey. I don't have really agenda for what we're going to talk about on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, it's really just, honestly, what comes to mind with the conversations that I have with my friends, with my peers. Um, so who knows? Who knows where this journey is going to take us? But I'm so excited to be able to try something different. Um, but, yeah, I'm so appreciative that you're with me on this journey and uh, we're going to have some fun and who knows where the year is going to lead us but thanks y'all for joining me along the ride i'm so excited about this and don't forget unscramble your faith and find clarity in the chaos bye guys <laughs>